Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And hi, hello, <laughs> welcome back everyone. It's been a minute since I've done this, but I'm back in the chair, back with my enormous microphone and back talking about space. And it looks like I've missed a ton. So the next few videos will be some new stuff, but I might be playing catch up and going over some of the old stuff that I missed while I was filming vacationing in Thailand and seeing beautiful things in Montana. Wow, that sounds fancy. When did I become fancy? So first of all, there was a whole Starship launch that I completely missed, Flight 9. This happened while I was in New Mexico, I think, on May 27th from Starbase in South Texas. And this was expected to break some new ground for SpaceX by reusing a Super Heavy for the first time ever. This particular booster first flew on Flight 7 in January, nailing its engine burn and returning to Starbase in those fun to watch chopstick arms. But this time, SpaceX did not attempt another catch for Flight 9. Instead, they conducted a variety of experiments with the booster, including bringing it back down to Earth on a higher angle of attack to increase increase atmospheric drag. So for safety's sake, SpaceX steered Super Heavy towards a hard splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, but that didn't quite work out. In their Flight 9 recap, SpaceX wrote, contact with the booster was lost shortly after the start of landing burn, when it experienced a rapid, unscheduled disassembly approximately six minutes after launch, bringing an end to the first flight of a Super Heavy booster. It may have ended with that landing burn. It does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? And then there was ship. The upper stage was supposed to make a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Western Australia about 65 minutes after launch. But it suffered an attitude control error that prevented the vehicle from getting into proper orientation for re-entry. SpaceX wrote in the recap that Starship then went through an automated safing process to vent the remaining pressure to place the vehicle in the safest condition for re-entry. Contact with Starship was lost approximately 46 minutes into the flight, with all debris expected to fall within the planned hazard area in the Indian Ocean. But this was still a considerable improvement over ship's performance on its last two liftoffs. On both Flight 7 and Flight 8, ship was lost less than 10 minutes after liftoff, as opposed to 46 minutes. So that part's better. But ship was supposed to deploy eight dummy versions of Starlink satellites about 20 minutes after liftoff, which would have been a landmark first for the Starship program. But that didn't happen. The payload door couldn't open fully, so SpaceX abandoned the deployment try. And then on June 18th, the hits just kept on coming. The company was testing a Starship upper stage at its Starbase site at around 11 p.m. to prepare for the upcoming 10th flight test. And then seemingly out of nowhere, the vehicle exploded, sending a huge fireball into the night sky. After the incident, SpaceX released a statement saying, A safety clear area around the site was maintained throughout the operation and all personnel are safe and accounted for. Our Starbase team is actively working to safe the test site and the immediate surrounding area in conjunction with local officials. There are no hazards to residents in surrounding communities and we ask that individuals do not attempt to approach the area while safing operations continue. Now, just to be clear, this was the upper stage ship that blew up, and it was on a test stand on Starbase's Massey site, not the orbital launch site that Starship typically takes off from. And the space engineer on Twitter has this pretty cool before and after of the Massey site after the explosion. And as I think we all know, static fires are common pre-launch tests, where the rocket's engines are briefly ignited while the vehicle is anchored to the ground. SpaceX had already conducted a static fire test with this ship, but 
but I believe that that involved just one of its Raptor engines. This test was aiming to fire all six of them. SpaceX has already static fired the Flight 10 Super Heavy booster, successfully igniting all 33 of its Raptors. So what do they think exactly happened here? So according to SpaceX, initial data suggests a failure of a composite overwrapped pressure vessel, or COPV, in the nose cone of this ship. Ship 36. COPVs are carbon fiber wrapped tanks that can hold various gases such as nitrogen, helium, and oxygen at high pressures and are much lighter than steel tanks of similar size. There are several COPVs on the wall of the payload bay on the windward side of Starship. These can be seen in footage from Ship 35 during Starship's ninth flight test. If one of Ship 36's COPVs ruptured, it would have acted like a shaped charge, ripping the payload wall outward. This in turn would have ripped apart the header tank transfer tubes, which run right next to these COPVs on the windward side of the vehicle. With these ruptures, all the liquid methane and liquid oxygen inside the tubes would have mixed and instantly ignited, resulting in the failure of the forward dome and causing the vehicle nose cone to collapse. So this explosion, coupled with ship breaking apart in the last three test flights and the super heavy having an RUD, I mean SpaceX might just be having a bit of a moment. SpaceX is still looking into seeing what happened on Flight 9, an investigation overseen by the FAA. As of this recording, there is not an official target launch date for Starship Flight 10, and even if there was one internally, it probably would have been adjusted given the events of June 18th. But Musk is very much tweeting onward and upward. He said that the next three Starship test launches could happen every three to four weeks. So yeah, it turned out that quite a bit happened in the SpaceX world in just the few weeks that I was gone. I don't think this is going to radically change a lot for SpaceX. I think the goal for Starship is still the same. Its concept is based upon the SpaceX Raptor engines being used in a multi-stage system. In this system, there are often two or three separate blocks with their own engine and fuel reserves. And this is particularly important for leaving Earth's orbit and traveling to the moon and Mars and beyond, which is the whole dream of Starship and I think it still pretty much is. But yeah, that's a lot of booms in a short span of time, but they're working in pretty quick succession, so it's probably just the hazard of the game. And none of this seems to be really affecting Falcon 9 at all, which is just chugging along as usual. But what do you guys think? Does any of these events give you pause about Starship, or does it just seem like business as usual? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So yeah. It's nice to be back, guys. <laughs> I feel like I haven't sat in this chair to do this, or really at all. I have not sat in this chair really at all in a really long time. And I feel like I haven't done this in a million years. And thank you so much for following along with me on all my trips and travels. I promise to show you more of it when I can. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.